Hello Beer Geeks and welcome to an episode in which I'm going to say something I never thought I'd say on the channel and indeed I never thought I'd say ever again, which is I'm going to drink some Fosters. Now if you're a beer geek and you're anything like me, you've been spending the last couple of years saying that this stuff is absolute rubbish. So I spent 10 years being really into beer, five years actually in the industry making this channel, doing consultancy, doing beer judging, and I am constantly telling people don't drink this nonsense, go drink something else, drink something more flavorful, something more exciting, something more craft, something smaller batch, something more ethical perhaps. But I actually don't remember how these taste whatsoever. Maybe they've changed, maybe they've got better, maybe my palate's changed because I've definitely come to appreciate good lager much much more over the, the years that I've been into it, or maybe I've just been a beer snob and I've dismissed this stuff and maybe actually it's very very tasty. The only way for me to find that out is to do it in the most unbiased way I can and that is a blind taste test. So I went out on a hunt for all of these beers. I've forgotten that you can't really get these in single cans. It's mostly in multi-packs, very much the opposite of the craft beer world. But I managed to track all of them down after some embarrassing moments in some offies. Um, and also I've tracked down a little craft number that's gonna hopefully trip me up and, and stop me from just being like, I can just give all of these a crap, uh, crap rating and then go, ha, see, macro's rubbish. So that's there to trip me up. Otherwise, we've got some classics from my youth. We've got Foster's, Cronenberg when I was feeling fancy. Uh, Budweiser when I was feeling fancy, which is probably going to blow the minds of, of some Americans. Um, and then stuff that I never really drank at all because I always thought it was absolute rubbish. I'm not sure I've ever drank I must have done it at a pizza restaurant. So I'm going to be tasting these blind, they're going to be completely randomised so I don't know what I'm tasting. And I'm going to be putting all of my findings into a spreadsheet which I've got here. It's based loosely on the BJCP kind of judging that's often used um, to judge international beer competitions which I've used lots. But I've made it a bit more simple, a bit more kind of drinker focused so it's less technical. Um, and there's 10 points going for aroma, there's 10 points going for flavour well palette I've called it, so flavour and like how it feels, like the body of it, the carbonation of it. Uh, and then five points for the aftertaste, which is of course important in a crispy, crispy boy. So I'm going to give these a go uh, in rounds of four. You're going to know what I'm drinking, I'm not, and then we're going to meet up at the end. <sighs> and we'll see if I've been wrong all my beer life. Okay, so I have my first four beers. This has been one of the most requested videos we've we've ever had. So clearly, clearly you guys hate me, but hopefully at the end of this, we might work out what you should drink should you walk into the bar and there's no good options uh, other than gin or probably Guinness. Right, beer number one. It's not a bad aroma actually. It's kind of lemon and honey, just a shade sweet. A little bit corn, creamed cornish. Really light in the body. Very sweet, zero hop finish. I think that's a six out of 10 for aroma. Palette was disappointing, really thin. Oh, just, just nothing, just a nothing. It was a nothing. Three, after taste that, I mean, there wasn't one. So <laughs> I don't know if that's good or bad considering the styles that we're talking about. Beer number two. About the same color. Well, they're all about the same color. I should probably stop doing that. That's a hoppy aroma as well, like de definitely like green grass. It smells all right, but it smells a little bit like soda water, which is probably just like carbonic acid, the bubbles literally popping in my face. If you can smell the carbonic acid, you know there's not a lot to this beer. The aroma was, was almost nothingy. I'm gonna give that a, f actually the same, because it didn't have the cream corn, but it didn't have as much. So I'm gonna give that a six. Palette was, was much better, more texture to it, more um, kind of hoppy character to it. There was a definite kind of bite. So I'm gonna give the palette a five. Aftertaste was actually all right, really nice and quite hoppy. Um, when I say hoppy, I don't mean like loads of hop kind of citrus character, I just mean like a proper bit of finish and you know, a kind of prickle that you'd expect from using really bitter flowers in your beer. So I'm gonna give that a six. Beer number three. Little bit of head retention there, that's reassuring. Hmm, okay, so that's got hop character, but very earthy. Almost kind of noble hop character, like Sazi or Halatawi. I'm surprised that I'm actually picking that up in any of these beers. And a little bit of biscuity, lemony. <laughs> smells pretty good. Let's see if it's backed up. 
it feels like they got a hopping rate of a proper Pilsner, but then didn't add proper malt character, yeast character or anything. So you're just left with slight hop tea. Beer number four. Ah, there's that creamed corn thing again. And not a lot else, to be honest. Maybe some biscuity malt, but it smells a bit like a tin of sweet corn. Yeah, soda water. There's nothing to that. There's nothing on the aroma. There's nothing on the flavor. Just terrible. Uh, bring on the next four. So we're on to the second round. The first round was pretty disappointing. I feel like though, I have marked it quite generously. I just want to be clear that when I do international professional judging, I am rarely that nice. Um, and now I'm gonna have to stick with that baseline because I've started it. Um, I thought I'd be able to pick out, you know, one of them I might be like, oh, that's probably Carlsberg or something, but zero clue. But <laughs> I can smell, uh, I can smell basically weed cat pee from here. So I think one of these uh, is skunked and one of them, I, Heineken is the famous one for being skunked. So maybe there's Heineken in here. Oh, good Lord, what? So that smells like somebody's roasted the corn. Okay, that's not bad, but it's got that kind of earthy thing that one of the beers in the previous round had. And it doesn't smell like beer, it smells like corn. So uh, it's a four for the aroma. The palette's all right. It's got a nice body to it because of that, that decent bitterness. Um, uh, the finish is, is nothing again. None of these beers really have a finish. Like lagers should have a low hopping rate, but they should still be, have hop crispness as well as like that kind of lager just snap that the lager yeasts have. I mean, that smells identical. Identical. I've forgotten which ones, no, I do know which one's which, but they smell identical. But look at that. Lovely conditioning on that beer, to be fair to whoever made that. It's very sweet. There's zero hop to it. There's something a little bit enjoyable about that. I think that's the skunky one as well. I think the, the aroma's kind of, yeah, I think that's the skunky one. It comes through once you swallow definite uh, skunky, weedy, funky notes. Maybe that's quite why I quite like it, because I drink lots of dank beer. Stop going back in. Right, next. Huh. Now that's got loads of <laughs> honey biscuit kind of stuff going on. All right. All right, maybe. Maybe not. This if you added a teaspoon of white sugar to some fizzy water, that's what that tastes of. Yeah, super weird one, man. <laughs> okay. So you can see that is hazy. Uh, so unless something's gone really wrong in a massive beer factory, that is the craft one. So yeah, it smells pretty good. It smells like honey and biscuit. Huh. Really floral, almost Turkish delight somewhere there. Uh, yeah, so nice and floral, rose rose kind of thing. Decent bit of finish. I'd want a little bit more. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a seven. It's the first proper hoppy one we've got. There we go. Right. Next round. Why did you do this to yourself? This is malt torture on a Monday. Uh, right. So um, I still haven't. Like I thought the skunky one might be in Heineken. That's the only one I've sort of been like, yeah, maybe I know this. Hmm. It smells like all the others, uh, <laughs> which was uh, something I should have seen coming. So it's nice, it's sweet, corny, honeyed, no hop character to speak of. Hmm. I thought that one was gonna be quite nice and then it just drifted off into nothing, but it's got nice body to it and carbonation and a kind of honey biscuit thing. But then just all of these beers just kind of flop. They don't finish. What about this one? Huh. Is that a different colour? Yeah, that one's a shade more golden. So they've added a bit more malt depth to it maybe, which means they've managed to pop it a little bit more. Maybe. It smells not, yeah, definite honey. None of that corn character really. It smells all right. Till then. 
It's got a sweeter, richer, more darker biscuit, like proper Hovis kind of digestive, not cheap, rich tea. But no hop character to balance that out, actually, so it comes across a little bit sweet. Uh, palette was all right, nothing special. Uh, the aftertaste was, was shit. I'm on my penultimate lager. I'd love to say I'm getting emotional about this, but I'm not. Ooh, it smells like it doesn't smell like lemonade. It smells like a like a shandy. Ooh. Ooh, no. Ooh. It's like licking a postage stamp. What is that? That's the first of all of these that I've actively been like, that's unpleasant. What's happened there? I'm gonna warm this up a little bit. Cause when you warm up beer, you can tend to get more flavor out of it. Oh yeah, it's getting green apple-y. Green apple um, acetaldehyde is an off flavor that is quite nice in Belgian beers, like big 7% Belgian beers. In a lager, it's just about the last thing you want. It's gonna ruin that crispness by being sweet and cloying and heady. Ooh, it's starting to smell quite nasty. Yeah, it smells like fake green apple sweets now. Yeah, just dry, like tannic, it dries out the roof of your mouth. Um, I don't know what to do about the aroma. It was nice when it was cold. Uh, no, it's rancid. Uh, three, palate was fine, five, but that aftertaste, that poster stamp thing, that, that's the worst one. That's actively bad. That's getting a one. Ugh. Come on, please be better. Well, the cream corn thing's back a little bit, but there's a hoppiness to that. There's a savory grass kind of thing. I don't mind that, I don't mind that. Bitterness, genuine bitterness. So I've only had bitterness from the one I thought was the craft beer and I've had it from that. I mean, that could be the, no, it can't be the craft beer because of the haze with the other one, but that is not a bad lager. It's got a big aroma, it's got that green funkiness, maybe a bit of skunk, maybe this is, is could be the Heineken. That, that's not bad, that's a nice aroma. Gonna give that a seven. Really nice full body palette, probably a seven. And the aftertaste is good. Okay, there we go, 11 macro beers and one crafty craft beer snuck in there. Uh, there's some outliers, we've got number 12 that scored pretty well, number 8 that scored pretty well, number 2 that scored pretty well, and then at the bottom we've got 6 and 11, I'm dying to find out what all of those beers are. So I'm glad that we've got the full gamut, maybe I'm going to be proved wrong about one beer and proved very right about another. I'll take that, let's find out what they were. Okay, so my glamorous assistant has put the beers in the order in which they were drunk and I'm off camera. I haven't seen it yet, I'm about to walk in and find out. Uh, just before I do, it's worth noting that after I finished the tasting, I realized I'd forgotten to do the comment section. So I tasted through them all again uh, and wrote down what I thought in what I hope is an amusing and pithy way, but <laughs> we'll find out. So here we go. I don't know which end is the start. This end is the start, should have sorted that before we started filming. So this was number one, uh, which I gave 14 and called corny and sweet. Much like me. I'm surprised, I thought, I thought that would have nothing to it. Uh, Stella is a beer I know pretty well and it fared all right, because it's an all right beer. Uh, Riney, this is the Aldi special, which used to be absolutely delicious and apparently they've changed who makes it. Um, had a hoppy aroma and was kind of let down by the finish. It, it, it was really, really thin. Uh, Carlsberg, um, <laughs> nothing to report is about right. There's just nothing to say for that beer. Peroni, which in my head I fucking hate. Um, I've put not a lot more to report. Uh, so actually that's got more than Carlsberg, which I wouldn't have expected, although it is a much stronger beer. So that's where some character's coming from. Uh, <laughs> this was the one that I found weirdly Moorish, um, but is terrible. Um, I guess once you add the lime, it's probably quite tasty. So maybe 
Maybe there's a video in that. Cause light. Uh, nothing to it, but better that way. Yeah, that's probably true of most of these beers. Uh, then we got to the crafty one. Hazy, hoppy, but lacked finish. Yeah, I kind of stand by that. You'd want... Yeah, 5.4. You'd, you'd want something a bit more a bit more from that, but it's a pretty good beer. Amstel, classic hotel bar beer. I mean, yeah. In my head, I thought that might have been Stella because I've drunk it on the continent in hotels before, but it wasn't, it was Amstel. Um, <laughs> Fusters. All going well till it becomes soda water is what I've put. So uh, yeah, it actually had aroma. Can that be right? So the worst one was Cronenberg 1664. So it's the biggest of the macros, or maybe the Rhinie's bigger. Uh, no, the Rhinie's smaller. Yeah, so I think it's the biggest of the macro beers, and it was by far the worst, like actively bad, actively nasty. Um, I never really loved it. I remember it being very bitter when I was a teen, but according to that, well, given the aftertaste one, <laughs> why wouldn't I go back in? And it's no better from the can. It's got banana now, what? What is going on there? So most of these beers are made by making a much stronger beer and then you liquor it back to separate strengths. In fact, I have a source in the beer industry that tells me that these are the same original brew, just liquored back to different strengths. Um, I'm not sure I could buy that from the actual flavors of them, but they are both fucking awful. Um, yeah, just terrible. Don't drink Cone Broke 1664. Um, so the winner with 20, higher than the craft, is actually Heineken. Now that upsets me greatly. If you've watched this channel, you've seen that I think that Heineken are one of the worst companies in the world. And if you look that up, they've done some horrific things and I'd never drink it normally. So what have we learned? What have we learned from this experiment? So the first thing that I've learned is that my bias was slightly justified. Like pretty much all of these beers were shit. Um, and if they were entered into a proper judging process, uh, they wouldn't get a look in. Um, they, they'd struggle to get like, half marks they're really desperately flawed when it comes to the idea of what a good lager should be but that doesn't necessarily necessarily mean they're desperately flawed in what people look for in their lagers um if you're looking for really good lager that's really available uh you could look to heineken depends on your point of view but breweries like paulana uh anything from munich essentially all of the big guys there spartan Leuvenbrau, augustina paulana uh hackershaw they all make fantastic lagers czech republic as well i mean the best you know, international scale brewery in the world, I think, is Pilsner Raquel. They only make one beer, but it's better than most craft varieties. It's absolutely incredible. We love it. I would love, love, love to do an international episode of this and try some uh, lagers from all around the world because, you know, it started with Pilsner Raquel. They were the original, but Pilsner spread all over the world. And I bet there's lots of delicious and exciting and also terrible variations going on. So maybe there's an international episode in this. Let me know what your local macro lager is, whether it's any good. Maybe give it a blind taste test if you can next to a craft beer or next to something a bit more um, globally available and let us know what you think. But otherwise, I am reassured to know that I can go for the next 10 years without really worrying that I've missed anything because even Heineken is nowhere close to Pilsner Raquel and is nowhere close to any of the amazing craft varieties that we have. So yeah, drink Heineken, but don't. What a message. <laughs>